you were with LeBron with a 61 uh, four and a half years ago. W yeah. What were you thinking tonight when you were out there and on the bench watching yeah. it? When he plays like that, I mean, I mean, any every night he he's dominant. But that right there shows, you know, what everyone talks about: just being the best player in the game, being the best player in the world. Uh, when he's, you know, when he's in that kind of rhythm, uh, that kind of mindset, there's no one on his earth that can stop him. Uh, and he knew how important this game was um, for us. I'm um, after losing four in a row, and you know, he, he just he put us on his back, and everyone chipped in. What's the balance being out there with him and not just ball watching because he's been <laughs> in so dominant? Well, you gonna ball watch, you know, it's a part of it. Um, like I said, you know, but you see the guys who's out there. They, they you know, D Rose was aggressive. Um, you know, Jay Crowder had a great job of uh, his minutes and you know, scoring like they got like 17. So you just gotta be, you know, you gotta be ready. Um, but you definitely go. You're going to watch the show just like everyone else. Is there some part of his game, though, that, I don't know, his fall away or something that you particularly appreciated tonight? I mean, I've seen it all. Um, I mean, just all the shots that he's worked on, he was hitting them all tonight. You know, and a lot of that is just, you know, what he, like he talked about, is just him getting back into better shape because he missed training camp. And um, now he can get down there, and, you know, and bang and bang and you know, do all the things he needs to do. But, you know, obviously, the unguardable shots, I mean, it's great defense, it's better offense. So. <laughs> His play of the post tonight was uh, some of the most best he's ever had. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people want him to do that all the time, right? People say, why don't he do that all the time? Um, you know, that's a lot of wear and tear down there in that, in that paint. Um, obviously, he loves. He's a pass first guy. Tonight, he was a scorer first, um, but he plays on top of the key because he's a pass first guy. Um, but tonight, a night he knew, could no one guard him. Um, he knew we needed it, and once he got it going, I mean, he lived down there. So it was a he put on the clinic. Were you surprised to see him be able to back down six, seven, eight, nine, ten dribbles without without a Double team or yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I guess that was the game plan. <laughs> uh, I thought it was going to be some double teams coming at some point, but uh, you know how they say we're going to live with it? I guess, I guess they live with it, you know. Um, but we're glad because we needed it. We needed this win. Um, you know, we've had two good road wins this year with Milwaukee and uh, Washington, two of the better teams in this conference. So hopefully we can, uh, you know, string a couple together where we um, you know, play with the same mentality. Um, you know, same. Do you think the shorter preseason has impacted everybody around the league? I think it impacted a lot. Um, guys, especially if you're a little older. <laughs> if you're younger, it probably played a little bit into your hand. If you're a little older, it probably impacted. It definitely did. If this was new. This was, you know, normally when your first game of the season normally around Halloween or somewhere. And we was seven games in around that time. Um, and you can see, you know, especially us, a lot of guys came, you know, even though we came in, sh in camp in good shape, wasn't in game shape. And the games happened real fast, and um, you know it took a while. So uh, it definitely impacted a little bit, but um, I, I don't think no one's complaining. I think everyone's fine with how the schedule is laid out, and you know how it takes away a few of the back-to-backs, etc. What else did you like tonight besides LeBron's 57? There are a lot of good things out there. Yeah, I mean, just you know the team. The, the biggest thing with our team is you know on the defensive end of the floor and throughout the game, you know, talk to each other, communicate. You know, we all we got a lot of new guys. You know, guys are trying to understand how to talk to each other. You know, and tonight I was a and, and last game as well, but tonight was just another great step in that direction of guys communicating, um, getting on the same page. I mean, we all make mistakes, there's mistakes made, but it was talking, it was voices being heard, um, and we need that. You know, we need to hear each other's voices and, you know, we're going to win because we got to do them defensively on the floor. Dwayne, since you've seen it all, was there at a certain point tonight that you saw this coming? Saw it coming? Yeah. No, it's kind of like you look you look up and he's like, oh, he got 35. And then next time you look up, you're like, oh, he got 51. You know, <laughs> it just, you know, it just come in bunches. It happened in bunches. So, um, you know, just celebrating it, man. You know, for the big, like I said, one, we needed this win. And two, um, we went to him and he delivered. Uh, seemed like every time. Hi, how are you? Have either of you ever served in the United States military? No, nope, I have not. I was in the Army. The Army. Air Force. Marine Corps. Thank you for all you've done for our country. And on behalf of the Cavaliers organization, we'd like to offer you tickets to our Hoops for Troops game on November 7th. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, thank you. Salute our military by purchasing a ticket to the November 7th game versus the Bucks. For every ticket purchased, the Cavs will donate a ticket to a service member. Visit Cavs.com slash troops to purchase.